Welcome to Podistan, the community for Indian podcasters by Indian podcasters. Want to know more about the nuts and bolts of podcasting in India? You're in the right place. Let's jump right in. So today we're going to talk about something that's very important and often overlooked, which is post-production. I would say it's overlooked by anybody who's never done post-production, but for people who are in the weeds of it, they would never overlook it. You of do course. it once, you know what it's all about. I meant I meant more from the point of view of someone starting out their show and not really understanding the importance. And oftentimes we've spoken to a lot of people who just completely disregard the process, who don't even take it into account. Yeah, they're not factoring in, if nothing else, the amount of time, the sheer amount of time it takes to edit a good episode, which we'll talk about in a moment. And I don't blame them either, you know. It's one of those things where the better you are at it as an editor or a producer or somebody who puts out content, the easier it's supposed to look. And they're also just used to seeing these like professionals, like live radio people just shoot out perfect sentences unedited. That doesn't happen in the real world when you start out. Yeah, I think there's a key difference between how people are at ease when they do something as opposed to how easy it actually is. Yeah, it's called experience. Yeah, just just spending hours at it, developing a skill and becoming good at it so that it looks like it's easy, but it's actually not. Yeah, yeah, there's this huge learning curve to podcasting. But I have to say, even if you're a perfect podcaster, broadcaster, you can, you know, shoot out perfect sentences that don't need to be edited. That still doesn't take away the value of post-production. And maybe it doesn't even take away the amount of time post-production needs. For instance, let's just focus on Film Feud, which is what we're going to do for today's episode. There's no way we could shoot out an unedited film feud, at least in this stage of our podcasting lives. That still wouldn't take a lot of post-production work. I mean, we've tried a few episodes where uh, we consciously took the decision of going or trying to go one shot. But even then, you end up repeating yourself. Um, oftentimes, there's something that you think of midway through the episode, which makes sense at the beginning and stuff like that. So you you would still want to record that and try to figure out a way to edit that in a way that it flows well. Apart from that, I think uh, just just taking a step back, one thing that um, factors in into India specifically is just the amount of ambient noise that's present in each and every recording environment. And stuff like that is so crucial for what the end product is and is a big part of post-production as well. Removing your ambient noises, removing disruptions, dogs barking, cars outside. I actually just saw this post on this uh, international podcasting group that I'm on, which is obviously mostly dominated by Western people. And this guy put out like this whole tragic post about how he recorded a podcast in Mexico and the things he had to deal with, barking <laughs> dogs and the horn was blaring and the horn was honking. It thought people don't honk horns in non-developing countries, right? Yeah. So he was just freaking out. He's like, oh my God, guys, you have no idea what I had to cope with. And we're like, this is our life. Like, we have to cope with this or it's just a part of our podcasting dynamic. On that point, I mean, I've seen a lot of Indian podcasters just go with it, not bothered with it. Uh, F it. Just <laughs> keep going. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I think um, maybe the best way to go through this is to actually talk through our film feud post-production schedule. Um and then after that, we can dissect each of those things, right? So why don't I kick it off? Let's just assume we have planned an episode, we've watched the movie, we go, we come to our studio, we hit record, we record an episode, an intro, the main file, the outro, and uh, we have that recording in like a wave file, right? We proceed from there. So first things first, this sounds really basic, but we take the wave file, we took, we took, Upload it onto a computer and kick off our DAW. Do you know what that stands for, Vikram? Um, I know examples of DAWs. Okay, well, why don't you give me some examples? So I think Audacity is the most popular one uh, because it's free and um, fairly easy to use. I think uh, in terms of the podcasting sort of dimension, it's, it checks all the boxes in terms of what it can provide. But then there are other paid and more complicated ones like Logic and uh, Reaper, amongst others, and uh, they pretty much do the same thing when it comes to podcasting. Logic and Reaper and all these ones also have a lot of music mixing capabilities built in as well. So these things are called DAWs, which, if I'm not wrong, stands for Digital Audio Workstations. And they were very music focused because, of course, like talk and talk radio and podcasting wasn't a very commercial or mainstream thing. So they all have a lot of music capabilities. Audacity, as you said, having sort of the least amount of capability, but definitely does the job for a podcaster. Audacity is open source, is that right? Or it's just free, it has been for a long time. I'm not sure if it's open source. I think it has a parent body controlling it, but it's free and um, has both Windows and Mac versions. So it also had a lot of 
I guess, momentum in the early days of podcasting, and then it just kind of caught on. It became recommended by podcasters who wanted to teach new podcasters in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And it just sort of became the standard. And we started on Audacity as well. And to this day, I think it's fair to say we still prefer Audacity. Yeah, mostly because I have had no personal experience with DAWs in the past. So aka we are noobs we're which, noobs so whatever works don't there's there's no need to fix it which is fine you know most people who start out are noobs and that's great if somebody has the capability to really go in depth with logic or reaper both of which are great or isotope rx which i think is now in version 7 which is sort of this gold standard it's like magic right if you know what to do with it it's it's kind of like cgi it'll remove noises that you didn't think were removable it'll change like your pitch and frequency but the simplest version, it's the most important. It's it's the best way for you to edit out a clean episode and get your episode out. That's what matters. So that's our step one. We take our WAV file and we put it into Audacity. Uh, just to add to that, so we we shoot for a 35-minute, give or take, episode for Film Feud. And almost always, we end up recording at least an hour's worth of content. Yeah, that's an important part to talk about. What do we do within production to actually cater to post-production? So why don't we talk about that? One, as you said, we record a much longer piece of content because we know it's going to be edited. We feel free to repeat ourselves if you want to change something. We pause if there are noises. Anything else within that one hour that we're mindful of? I think one thing that uh, people who are not familiar with podcasting in general is that, you know, when you're having a conversation with a friend of yours, you just tend to speak over one another cut each other off and stuff like that but in a final episode whenever you're talking over one another for example that part becomes illegible so that's not good content so like those are the things during production we're mindful of in terms of when we're recording how we think that's going to come out on the final file so if we need to repeat that point or just kill that point altogether uh, those are those are a few things that we take care of. I was so tempted to speak over you I when know. you were talking. I saw your face, yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd keep things a little more informative. You, and... you opened your mouth three times. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Another important thing to talk about is that we record ambient noise, which is very crucial when you actually import your file into your DAW. What we do is we let our mics run once we've turned on our recorder. And we record 30 to 60 seconds of just the ambient noise. Ambient meaning the noise in the room, uh, the environmental noise. And what it does is it lets us capture that noise. And that way, when we put it into Audacity or any DAW, we can sample that 30, 60 seconds that we've taken and remove that ambient noise from the rest of the file. So if there's like a constant hum sound from like a tube light or, you know, any other ambient noise of maybe just the wind, then that noise will eventually be removable in the file. And most softwares do this pretty quickly and pretty cleanly. Audacity is no exception. I think it does the job pretty well. I'm sure like an isotope or a Hindenburg could do a better job. But it serves our purpose. It makes the background noise almost dead. And then it's up to us what we want to do with it. That being said, um, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't focus on that completely removing all quote-unquote pollutants from the, from the environment, right? Because what happens is when you have a high ambient noise, and you take that as a sample, and then when you end up removing that from your final file, it starts eating away from your actual audio quality. So uh, that is a necessary step, but another necessary step in pre-production is to ensure that your ambient noise levels aren't that high. That's right, and that has to be accounted for when you are hitting record, when you do a sound check and you check your levels and make sure that the noise to signal, which is to say the ambient noise versus the signal, which is your voice, that ratio is low enough that your signal and your and your voice is actually pretty high. It, it actually completely encompasses the ambient noise. So that way, it doesn't really matter if there's too much ambient noise. Yes, if there's a horn or there's a dog barking, that'll be captured. You can't avoid that. The best practice there is just to stop recording and then just cut it out of your audio completely in post-production. But yeah, completely agree. Shouldn't focus too much. Don't let it affect like the vocals and how you sound. That's right. Enough about step one, Vidur. What do we do next? Step two is... This is something super minor, but when we record a file, and most people tend to end up with files that are actually in stereo for two-person recording, we convert that to mono, treat each track differently. I think that's an important step. People have different voices, people have different mics, and the ambient noise and the treatment that needs to be done on each is different. So I think step two, that's a minor one, is to treat each track separately. And step three, let's get to it, the grind of editing. You know, you just hit play and start seeing what the episode brings. The Most people do this differently. I think... We've switched around on this, but one way to do editing on audio is to do one full pass for the episode, 
where you just remove all the noises, all the segments that you're not going to keep. Sometimes it's very obvious when you're not going to keep a segment because we repeated something. Sometimes it's not so obvious, which is almost like a content edit where you just think the segment can just go away. That, as well as removing the ums and ahs and, you know, deep breaths that happen into the mic that I'm happy to show right now. Or the gulps. <sighs> gulps, you know. Uh, things that just don't make for good audio. It's not that it's not natural. That's fine. You could keep them in. But, you know, people are listening to them on their headphones. It's it's not the most pleasant noise, a gulp. It's not the most pleasant to just hear someone pause for a long time and then say, um, or ah. Uh, just remove those. You know, if you think it, it's keeping it natural, you can keep it in. But otherwise, one quick pass, which is to say of going through the full episode, taking your time and removing everything that's unnecessary, that's probably the next step. I agree. I think um, we just internally call that stuff non-content, right? So so just taking a pass and removing all the non-content stuff, including the six burps that I take in each recording, which I fail to understand why you won't let me keep them in. <laughs> it's natural, right? <laughs> and uh, I think the other uh, the other purpose of doing this pass is also uh, you just end up structuring the episode in your head. So when you do that second pass where you're doing content edits for the most part, you know, uh, you have a good idea of what needs to go out, what needs to stay in and stuff like that. So it helps. That's, I think, one of the things that people don't anticipate is that if you have an hour worth of recording, then that doesn't translate to an hour worth of editing for the final pass. Yeah, as you said, we've we've come to the next step, which is to do the pass, the non-content pass, and then do the next pass, which is a content pass. Now, I have to say, it just doesn't need to work this way for other episodes. This is just for Film Feud, where I would say it's content heavy, which is to say there are things that are said at the end that correspond to the beginning. It's not a simple Q&A. We're constantly talking, bickering at each other, talking over each other, feuding, essentially. So that content pass, which is the next step, that is an important piece of the puzzle, simply because the first time you do it, especially if it's been a while since you recorded it, or somebody else is editing it who wasn't in the recording, they need to reach the end and realize what all we're talking about to understand what needs to be kept from the beginning. Maybe we're repeating something that's better at the end. Maybe we're repeating something that was better at the beginning and needs to be cut out, and a hundred other permutations of that, right? So it's great that you get to listen to the episode while editing it, while doing non-content stuff, so you can do content the next round. And also a good hack uh, during this process is when you do realize during recording that this is something that might might be well suited for the beginning of the episode, just leave yourself a quick audio note while you're recording as well. So that when you do hear it, you know immediately instead of having to think, oh, I feel like I recorded something here, which made sense. Just leave yourself a quick audio note. When you're, when you're going over that pass, you immediately know what it's meant for. Why don't you demonstrate that, Vikram? Leave yourself an audio note for editing this episode. Note, remove the burp that I just burped. Oh, and what do you know? It's gone. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so we've reached a stage where we have a content-edited episode, hopefully from one hour of a raw file with ums, ahs, burps, and uh, unnecessary pauses, and a chunk of content that we don't want to use. We are down to, let's just say, hopefully a 40-minute file where we have clean audio and good content. What's next? So the 40-minute file that we have is basically still raw audio, right? There's, there's, it's just us talking. Um, there's no theme or anything like that. It's nowhere close to the final output that we're going to push out. So we are left with one important step here, which is levelating your audio. What ends up happening in a multi-person podcast is that one person will have a different output of audio in terms of the level, in terms of the volume, um, for instance, I talk softer than you and my mic tends to be a little further away than you, just how uncomfortable. Yeah. And I feel like even though we have deep voices, I feel like I have a bassier voice. So in terms of how that output comes out, it's very different when we see the raw waveforms of our files on our DAWs, right? Like mine, mine might be... Yours are like mountains and mine are like hillocks. Yeah. And also I just, just a... I don't know if this is a peeve or not, but yours seem to be like grouped closer together while mine are more spaced apart. Even though I talk slower than you, it just doesn't make sense, man. That's the science that's beyond me. That's because I'm superior. Okay, that, that's what that means. Well-established audio norm. If your waveforms are grouped closer together, uh -huh. you are a better podcaster than the other. Learning something new every day. Thanks for that, man. So so we just end up using this tool called a levelator. Uh, it's mostly an audio compressor of sorts. And what that does is it matches and sort of averages out the output volume of both tracks, if there are two tracks, and brings them closer together so that they're basically the same volume. Which is so important because you don't want to 
constantly keep asking people to shout during production if they're naturally soft spoken because the other person's shouting similarly you don't want to tone down someone if somebody gets really enthusiastic if they lean in close to the mic if they lean out close to the mic you want all that audio to get flattened out to be at the same level that's super useful then the other thing about levelator is that it's just one click drag and drop an audio engineer better than us not that we audio engineers but somebody who knows what they're doing and they're very careful and love the nuance of audio engineering they might want to use other tools that other DAWs have to compress the audio which is to say is to flatten it to levelate it but we love levelator because it's drag and drop you take your file you drag it into levelator it just spits out a file called the same file name dot output you're good to go it also just uh, helps us by making the production process easier because um, just like you said uh, an audio engineer who definitely knows more than us because i'm assuming all of them do would probably have the input volumes while recording set closer to each other so that the raw file in itself has volumes that are closer to each other or matching but uh, we don't bother much with that do we we don't want to bother with the last 20% of seeking perfection if the output is good enough and i feel like our output is good enough with this workflow so post levelation we have um an audio track of both our tracks which are matched more or less in terms of the volume for both tracks then what we end up doing is we've created a template um obviously other people have other ways to go about this process but for film feud essentially we've created a template where one track is the film feud theme and we have a certain workflow in terms of how the episode comes out so it's the theme then it's the intro then it's a transition theme it's the main feature file then a transition theme and then the outro file and then a transition ending so we have all of this templatized in one saved file and then the process just becomes taking the audio tracks of the intro the feature and the outro and placing them in the relevant spots in this template file and then finally rendering that track just to break it down i mean most people don't really need the template it's actually a simple process you could do it in one file if you just have your theme music okay add the theme music first then you have your intro which is us speaking that one recorded Okay, place the intro and just do a little bit of mixing, which is to say, start us talking while the theme music still dying down. Add a little fade in. Great, you're sorted. Then you know you have to jump from your intro to when we go watch the movie and actually start talking about it. Okay, just take a piece of transition music. Add a little bit of mixing there as well. Fade it in when we stop talking. Fade it out when we start talking. Do the same thing when you transition to the outro and then end it with your ending theme. So mixing this file. essentially means that you end up getting one track with all of these different facets st- stitched together and that is more or less our our final output file but just before we do that we end up taking one more pass at the file essentially because uh, we haven't taken that pass post levelation um it's more to see just how everything's come together just run through the content again if there's any edit that we might have missed out on or or we feel strongly that it should be removed that's that's essentially when we do that Essentially one more pass can never hurt. Obviously you want to be mindful of your efficiency, but I think this one is very important because of levelator as you said because there are some noises that could have been super soft that creeped up once the audio was levelated because usually levelation brings the overall volume of the entire track a little bit upwards. Also, we last spoke about having a 40 minute track. I find that usually towards the end of this process in this final pass You do end up with 3 4 minutes. You've listened to the episode a couple more times. You realize what could be cut and you know there's this common editing phrase called kill your darlings. You want to be willing to kill your darlings at this point and just get rid of any content that you don't feel is at least you know your your A content or B content. You don't want to keep anything that is below a, a level B in there. Along with that, I think uh, another thing to be mindful of um, and it's completely natural is just to sort of start feeling some sort of fatigue, right? Like for after, sure. After listening to the same episode three times over and especially if it's like a half an hour 40 minute episode, that's like more or less 2 hours of you just listening to that one particular piece of content and you do develop some fatigue and and it's just a matter of being mindful that you are developing this fatigue so that doesn't sort of creep into your decision making process of what goes in what goes out i know earlier when we started the podcast and when we were editing it there were a lot of times where i was i would just be like screw it man let's just keep that in i need to push this file out which is not the case anymore because i understand why i was thinking like that what might help is you know making somebody else hear it 
But I have to say I've had troubles with that because just the way the workflow works, you know, you have all the files, you have the raw audio, your DAW is referring to these files, you have the template. How do you really pass the file around? And this goes really unnoticed, but what you also want is a good archive, a good directory of having access to that in the future. You know, we've struggled with this a lot where the final versions of our episodes are between you and me and hard drives and other people. That's not worth it as well. So I think the right approach is to power through the fatigue somehow, take breaks, obviously have a good schedule in terms of editing, don't have things down to the last minute, and then actually just come back to it, listen to it again, be willing to kill your darlings. And uh, yeah, so that that gets us to a finalized episode. One thing we didn't mention is that the final episode should be exported as MP3 because that's how the podcasting world works. You don't lose much in terms of quality. It's just a way of compressing the audio. And because podcasters often download the episodes or even stream the episodes, you know, you want the episode to be as low as possible. We tend to go with about one MB a minute. I think that satisfies uh, quality requirements without making the final file too heavy. And one thing I want to round out is uh, something you spoke about. You said half an hour becoming two hours when you listen to the episode. What do you think is the amount of time, the multiplier between an episode and the amount of time it takes to edit it? Let's just say for a film feud, which is about a 40-minute final episode, one hour raw recording. Right. Uh, it definitely varies from ep- um, show to show, right? An interview-based show would have a slightly simpler sort of uh, process for editing and getting to that final file. But if we talk about film feud, I would, in my experience, say that if we have one hour of content, that times... Well, somewhere between three and four would be the average amount of time it takes us to edit that episode and get it down to the final final version. For sure. I would say that's the minimum. And that's sort of the run rate that we've gotten to with time. You know, the 3x was definitely not possible when we started out. And if somebody's confused about hearing that number, because at the end of the day, what do we say? You take a couple of passes, you remove ums and ahs. If you're hitting pause every five seconds, every 10 seconds, every one minute yeah, while editing up. the file, it adds up. And you have to do little things. You have to select and highlight a piece of audio. You have to remove it. You have to silence other tracks. All that takes a lot of time. That effort is not to be underappreciated at all, which is why some people discount it. And, you know, like small things in that are like, for example, if I'm saying something and in terms of your content buckets that you mentioned, like A content and B content, something that we're discussing is A content. It's definitely a shoe in for the episode. But hypothetically, while I'm talking, you just take a loud breath. So that's sort of, and then you immediately start talking as well. So it's not like I can just very easily cut out that breath because it cut, cuts out the beginning of your sentence. So that that sort of like minor stuff actually takes way more time than the usual ums and ahs removal, right? So so to really cut down on that 3, 4x number, which is to say 3 to 4 hours for a film field episode, we can be exceedingly mindful during production as well. The more we are mindful during production, the better it is for post-production. But of course, there's definitely a floor as to how long it should take, especially if you want what I would call a spick and span final output. Clean audio, no noises, no ums and ahs, and good Properly content. documented files. Exactly. For for the future. There have been so many times where we require like the 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 edited file or like the project file for that particular episode, but all we have is the final MP3, which is almost always useless because it's in mono, it's all mixed together. I can't extract my audio or your audio from it. So that's a huge part of the process too. So one would think we finished out the process because now we have a final MP3 file, but we still actually need to upload it. And one thing we also didn't mention, which is relevant to the uploading, is uh, we must add labels and ID3 tags when we actually export the final file. The way podcasting works, a lot of podcasting platforms, publisher, podcatchers, they actually extract information from these ID3 tags. For instance, the name of the file, the name of the album, which in our case would be the show, obviously the name of the publisher, Mancha Media, the genres it's a part of, any Many other tags, thing. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's important as well. It takes two minutes, but it's a very important best practice. Okay, then we end up with the final MP3 file. What do we do? Where do we upload it? So we take that file and we end up uploading it to whatever hosting provider um, that we have. We're currently on Audioboom. So we just go to the Audioboom platform, uh, publish our MP3, add our description, our show notes, uh, a thumbnail image for that particular episode and hit publish. I'm going to pause you there because you rushed through that, but that's not an easy task as well. And also an overlooked part of the whole three to four X time that you mentioned, right? That's definitely like a 10, 15 minute exercise if you do it right to add a good description which people often do go through to add a good image which could be an original or you're plucking out an image from somewhere or you're putting some thought into it maybe designing it labeling it whatever and uh, and even coming up with a good title for the episode all that is important as well and not to be discounted 
Also, these hosting providers, uh, we used to be on Libsyn, now Audio Boom. They help with the process too in terms of the actual uploading of the file because they cut down and compress the file size, making it even easier for people to download them. Yep, I think that about covers the whole post-production process. And then obviously we get to marketing and distribution and uh, we're going to cover that in another episode. For sure. This just gets us to a new episode in uh, one's podcast RSS feed, which is always a win. Mm-hmm.